Hey, what's going on everyone? Vega here from Serpent X Tech, and in this video we'll be taking a look at Pepe Proof of Work Token, how to mine it, some of the overclock settings that I was able to get as far as tuning, some of the issues I bumped into, and profitability. Now Pepe W, or Pepe Pow, or Pepe Proof of Work, whatever you want to call it, is not the same thing as the original Pepe token, and it's also not the same thing as the Pepe token you've been hearing on the news in various crypto outlets, where people who got in super early were able to make a decent profit. These are three different tokens, don't get them confused. But Pepe Proof of Work, or Pepe W, has a total supply of 90 billion. Its algorithm operates on meme hash, which kind of reminds me of ETH hash, as far as overclock settings and then uh, some of the hash rate you're able to obtain, its block times is 20 seconds and its block rewards is 100,000 Pepe W. So each block will net you 100,000 Pepe W. Now it is a meme token. So there's no real intrinsic or tangible value, but it is a meme token that is usually built up and then the community keeps it lifted or it crashes and burns so this is spec mining or a speculative asset however just as much as uh, a token could fail it could also do very well as we've seen with recent events there was no pre-mine and as it says here it is community driven they have a windows wallet a linux wallet a mac wallet and then obviously you could join their discord their github here um, looks like they were doing something in 2020 if we actually go back up and uh, click on the individual who, who submitted this or has this page, we could see some activity in late 2022. And it's really in early 2023 that things really started to go off. Now, usually you can find these tokens before they come out. And I show you how or I talk about how in a previous video, which I will have all of this linked in the description, including data to the overclock settings and stuff like that. Uh, but the community has covered this token in depth and they've done a really great job. So I felt no need to do it. However, I just wanted to share my data so you can compare and contrast with some of your other favorite content creators. There was also an issue with the wallet where people were seeing their antiviruses or programs or whatever they're using to protect their devices, advising them that there was a virus or Trojan inside the wallet. There has since been an update and the full story of that can be captured or provided to you by Chump Change and Yeti. And their website, which I will have linked below, Yeti's website, actually did an audit of the previous version wallet and the latest version. And it gave it a good, decent bill of health. But I'll let you go and make that determination for yourself. I am actually mining and auto-converting. And I'll tell you that in just a moment. Now, Pepe POW shows up on the mining pool stats stream website. And it says 14 days, but the coin has been around a little bit longer than that. And again, I show you how to find these tokens before they start showing up on websites such as this or mining calculators. Make sure you check that out in the description. But it has about 2.9, almost basically, let's say 3.5 Terra hash. There's some inconsistencies with the hash rate being reported right now on mining pool stats .stream. People are solo mining. Uh, people are pool mining. But let's say 3.5 Terra hash total on the network. Unfortunately, mining four people has 70% of the net hash on one pool. And that's never a good thing. Uh, and if there is an incentive to attack the network, somebody will. That's what you're that's what you're used to hearing as far as a 51% attack. Now I doubt that will happen here, but if it does become profitable to exploit this network because so much of the hash rate is already they're right for the picking somebody will do it so it's always advised to spread your net hash out amongst pools and there's a load of them to choose from also if you scroll down here and you're able to ascertain what your rigs hash rate or gpu's hash rate is there's a nice little calculator that makes it a little bit easy so if 900 mega hash you're making about five dollars and 44 cents usd fiat or ninety thousand pepe w every 24 hours so that information is very useful for you to gauge whether or not you're going to get in as far as overclocks, I have all that in a Reddit post. So I will share that with you. I have various amounts of GPUs ranging from the 10 series to the 20 series to the 8, A series like A2000 to the 30 series. I also have the 7900 XTX and all that data will be linked down in the Reddit. 
Now, some of the overclock settings that you're going to see here in just a minute on Hive, I want you to pause, take a screenshot of, and compare. But I also did post them in this Reddit article as well, as and including my final kind of almost there finalized settings. And I do mention that disclaimer that it, what's in this Reddit post isn't my final settings. But this is close to what I had on one of my rigs here with eight GPUs on NVIDIA, and then close to what I had well, one of my rigs with 12 GPUs. And then the 7900 XT really blew everything out of the water because even though this thing is not as efficient as the 6000 series or the 7000 series, stock, we went from 120 mega hash at 400 watts plus down to around 236 watts and hitting 105 mega hash. And then tuning it even further, we were got down to 85-ish mega hash at 196 watts. I think the lowest I've seen was, again, using Linux, a Linux OS, mining OS, whatever it might be, and was 170, 171, somewhere in there. But use these overclock settings to compare and contrast because you have to tune for your setup, your configuration, and everything. And I'll explain why that is in just a minute. Here is my first NVIDIA rig with a mix of, there's a 1080 Ti, there's a 2070, and the rest are 3000 series. So they're basically the same 3080, 3060 Ti, 3070. Here is my second NVIDIA rig with 12 GPUs ranging from a 1060, 1660 Super, 1660 Ti, A2000, and again, a bunch of 30 series GPUs. You will see here on the right hand side that I locked the memory and I locked the, the core clock. You can push the core clock on these down to 1500 and boost up the memory or lock it a different way, which I have done and I showed in the Reddit post here. But I bumped into some issues with instability on that rig that I just showed you. So here is my lock settings, which I set either in the flight sheet or through the tuning page by clicking this and just pasting that all right there. But that may not work for you. So again, you're going to have to tune per your setup. My AMD rig is where I had the most trouble. Take a quick look, screenshot, whatever you need to do. But you can use hashrate.no's settings. The problem is, for some reason, the 6700 XT does not want to do it. For example, on hashrate.no, you could see that the 6700 XT Pepe W or Pepe Proof of Work is the number one coin to mine for that particular card. And it says the core clock, lock it at 1900, MEM 1050 under voltage to uh, 750 millivolts, so on and so forth. But when I do that, I start getting illegal memory access errors. And then if I don't, even if I just bump up the core, I start getting errors. So something's going on with the 6700 XT. That's a problem for me to figure out in a different day. Uh, but just be aware that the overclock settings that you might see on hashrate.no or that you might be seeing right now may not apply to your GPU. So get close in the ballpark and then tune it for more efficiency or more to your liking based on your your thermal environment, your thermals and your environment. That's in Silicon Lottery also has an effect. So you just got to tune for your setup. The 5700 XTs, I want to get a little bit better. You won't find any data on the hash rate dot no place. Uh, but you can see some of these cards, like I dropped the core voltage down. This ASRock one has always been a problem child. So that gave me some issues anytime I try to drop the core voltage. But try to tune it to get the power draw down and a hash up just like anything else. So look at those settings and compare. As far as the flight sheet setup, it's very simple. But I'm doing it a little bit differently. And what I mean by that is I am using Zpool to mine. And so it's auto-exchanging every Pepe W token into Litecoin. Now, there's a catch-22 with this. If there's not enough currency, like Zpool ran out of Litecoin, and it gave me a little message that if I did hit the minimum threshold, there will be a delay in payments. It already fixed it, and there's no delay in payment. I just need to hit the threshold. But pools like this, Zerg Pool and Z Pool, are great because you can mine a speculative asset that you're unsure about, reap in the 24-hour profits, and get paid out in a different currency that's a little bit more stable. For example, Bitcoin. But right now, with ordinals and a number of things happening, Bitcoin's congestion has increased because of the transaction increase. And therefore, fees have increased. And so you kind of like want to pick and choose your battles. I chose Litecoin because it's cheaper and it's fast. And uh, there's not a lot of craziness going on. Because, you know, with Ethereum, when something pops off, NFTs or whatever, the congestion, the fees go get, get a little bit crazy. And so you want to space out 
how often you get paid rather than having all these micro transactions and getting hit with fees. So if you can find the currency you want to get paid out in, otherwise you can mine to an exchange directly, which I never recommend doing, and then swap it out whenever you're comfortable or whenever you're ready to, to cash out. Uh, alternatively, use Z pool, Zerg pool, or whatever. Otherwise, you're a hodler, which means you're going to be mining Pepe W and you're going to be hanging on to it because you believe that the product is going to blow up and you're going to take profits then. Either way, whatever strategy you want, that is what I am doing. Now, right now, my flight sheet is set up to go to my Litecoin address, the meme hash algorithm, the pool, and then in the password section or the, excuse me, the correct configuration uh, for my password would have been up here if it was normal. But because I'm using Z pool, I just put it down here, right? And so I got disabled CPU because we're having to use SRB miner. That's the one right now that supports Pepe. And, and there's probably a new miner that will come out in a few days. Just follow the commands and the information provided by that new mi uh, mining program. But disable CPU for SRB because if you don't, it will use your CPU. Uh, password, I have to specify this because, again, I'm trying to tell Z pool, hey, I'm mining Pepe W, but I want Litecoin. And then worker, I just added that just to try to get the worker. Because for some reason, Zpool doesn't put the worker name on here. I don't know why. So the only way I could tell which rig is what is because I can look at the hash rate. As far as mining on Windows, here is the configuration. So again, SRB multiminer.exe, disable CPU. Algorithm is set as meme hash. Pool is Zpool slash port number for Pepe W, right? Or the algorithm meme hash. Wallet, you put in whatever wallet you want to get paid out in. If it's Pepe W or Bitcoin or Litecoin, whatever you want, follow the guides. Zpool does a really good job of walking through that on their main website. You can just choose their reason, uh, the algorithm, the currency you want to get paid out in. Put in your, put in your wallet address and choose the, cur the supported currency that they can pay you out in. Don't think that every currency, like you can mine Pepe and get paid out in some weird hole-in-the-wall currency. Because you might have to wait on that, but just a heads up. And then on the rest of the Windows batch file config, you just do worker name and then password again, telling Zpool, hey, I'm mining Pepe, but I want to get paid out in Litecoin. So that is the Windows batch file setup. You can download the latest version of SRB Miner. Matter of fact, every time I type it in, it tries to get me to go to their website, but I just always type in a Google search SRB Miner, click on releases, scroll on down, and then choose the one that's correct for my system so 64 zip for this particular system extract that and inside there they already have a default pepe full or batch file that all you need to do is edit it's going to be under pepe pal right here so you just right click show more more options for windows 11 or just right click edit for windows 10 and then edit the information here to match your pool and your wallet address of your choice. Again, if you want to use their wallet and earn Pepe, they have a Windows wallet. You just click this. It's going to download this Windows zip. Um, I would urge anybody messing around with a new wallet to go check out Yeti's website for audits on particular currencies and wallets. But also, if you're going to play with a new currency that hasn't been audited, to make sure you do it on a secure system uh that you if something were to happen you you're not screwed okay don't keep don't do it on something you have personal data documents tax information w2s good pictures of your family from years ago just be be extra careful but last i check everything should be good with the latest release uh of this wallet but check out yeti's website linked in the description so last but not least let's round up with profits with this particular token I calculated, I haven't hit the full 24 hours yet, but I calculated at the rate I'm going with every rig and every GPU I have hashing away at it, I'm almost at the 24-hour mark, I'm making a little over 0 0.05 LTC. And what that equates to is about $5.09 fiat, right? And if we look at the mining post stream calculator, that's about on par. So under $5.50 fiat a day is what I'm making. A little under 90,000 or around 90,000 PEP AW is what I'm making every 24 hours right now. As the network hash rate increases, that could be a different story. As the network difficulty increases, that could be a different story. So you're just going to have to test it out, check it out, and use mining calculators such as hashrate.no or what to mine 
to really ascertain you know what is your 24-hour profits and is it worth it for you at your electric rates whatever you decide SRB miner is the only miner right now that I know that can mine Pepe, but that should change with BZ miner and a couple others coming out in the future for different generations. Make sure you figure out which strategy you're going to do. Are you going to mine and hodl, or are you going to mine and auto exchange, or are you going to mine, hodl for a bit, then exchange it? Figure out your strategy. Check out the overclocks that I shared with you, not only earlier, but down in the description. Compare that and get the best settings for you. And feel free to come back to this video, comment, and share with the community what your overclocks were with the by posting the make and model of your card, core clocks, mem clocks, voltages, whatever you got. Feel free to share that not only in the comments of this video, but also on the Reddit post where I will have linked down in the description. But that is going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for hanging out with us throughout this entire time. Sorry it was a little bit long, but do me a favor on the way out. Hit the like button. Make sure to get subscribed. Hit the notification bell to stay up to date. So let's check out some of the links in the description to help support the channel and what we do here. I appreciate you very much. You have yourself a wonderful day. Take care. I'll catch you in the next one.